Are you excited for the iPhone 11, whatever they're gonna call it? It doesn't seem like very many people are. Hey, hey, hey there friends on YouTube. My name's Jason, this is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest to hear it. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for stopping by. If you've been here before, thanks so much for coming back. You know, like and subscribe and bell notify yourself if it's your first time because, you know, maybe you want to come back and hear some more of this painfully honest talk. I know, cringy, right? Well, that's fine. I, anyway, let's talk about this iPhone 11. I haven't felt this little buzz for an iPhone since ever, ever? I don't know. It used to be people would line up outside the store to go get the iPhone. Now, nobody seems to give a crap at all about what's happening with the iPhone 11. I mean, we've known just about everything there is to know about the phone ever since the uh, January. And the problem is, like, the biggest discussion point has been how ugly the camera thingy is and whether or not it matters or whether or not you'll forget about it or whether or not you'll get used to it or blah, 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 blah. Yeah! Yeah! It's ugly. Other than the potential for never before seen camera features, there's nothing about this release to entice people to buy the phone. Let's take a look at the rumors that have been reported most and are likely to be the most accurate. We know now that there will be three different models of the iPhone. One, to be called the iPhone 11 R, one the iPhone 11, one the iPhone 11 Max, or as more recently reported, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. <laughs> We've talked about this pro naming scheme as a way to ignite people's sense of uh, FOMO, let's say, and get them to buy this new device uh, that's virtually the same device as last year's device with only minor incremental updates. I mean, you know, when you, you slap pro on there and everybody who thinks that they're big stuff, they, they're like, well, I got to get the pro. No different than last year's phone. I don't care, it's a pro. Okay, so I gotta give the the folks at Apple and their marketing team a, a lot of credit because changing this whole naming scheme to pro is a solid marketing move because there's plenty of iPhone users out there that would immediately feel inadequate if they didn't have something that was called a pro model, even though, uh, same phone. It's the same phone. Likely, the marketing team at Apple realized they had little chance of wooing people to upgrade to a warmed-over version of the same phones that have been out basically for two years. Uh, thus, the shift in this naming convention. Golf clap to my Apple's marketing department. Some of the upgrades that aren't really upgrades will include an A13 chip that will be faster than the already faster than it needs to be A12. <laughs> chip uh and and improved face id that will allow you to scan your face from different directions and so you won't have to do this to get face id to work might be a reason to buy the phone just right there i don't know i don't know you tell me we're gonna get new colors as well obviously new colors every year new colors and this year if we can go by what they put on the invitation to next week's event we're gonna get some pastel colors and for that i care not i don't give a crap because I don't like pastel colors, why would I want a pastel phone? In addition to pastel colors that I would never deign to carry in my life, they're gonna have a, the, a frosted glass on the back, just like the Pixel did last year. I like that, it's nice, but uh, yeah, it's not really new. We may see things that are so revolutionary like slow-mo selfies, because that is something you would want. And FaceTime eye correction, which creepily takes you to from looking at the screen to looking at the camera in, in, with some sort of software manipulation. So, so your eyes look a little bit buggier and they're, they're looking at the camera. It's really, really disturbing. Uh, it's pretty well assured that we're gonna see reverse wireless charging like Samsung and Huawei have already introduced on phones that they've put out. That will be nice if you wanna charge your AirPods while your phone is laying face down and unusable. So that's a feature that everybody wants. I've had two Samsung phones at this point with this feature, the S10 Plus, the Note 10, and I have tried it out uh, at the events where I was like, oh, look, I put the Galaxy Buds on and they start charging. And then um, I never used it again. Why would you want to have something on the back of your phone so that you can't see your phone? It's a crazy time. Crazy time. People don't make sense anymore, people. One addition to the power delivery area that is likely to show up in this edition of the iPhone is a more powerful charger in the box. 
I mean, let's be let's be honest. The five watt charger that Apple's been selling since 2008 or whatever it was has been it's just become a bad joke. It's it's like your uncle at Thanksgiving. So at the very least, we can be excited that your uncle's not coming to Thanksgiving dinner this year. There are several other all but confirmed features that barely move the needle, like improved water resistance. Oh my God, I've been waiting for that. And new configuration of the mute switch. So it goes up and down instead of side to side. But the biggest, most controversial change with the iPhone this year is of course, the camera. Jokes about the camera square looking like a stovetop or bug eyes or you know warts or whatever wore themselves out like months ago, okay? So we're not even gonna be able to have fun with that when the phone comes out. But with the addition of the third camera eye on the Pro models, Apple has a chance perhaps to surprise us with new features in the software. And by new features, I don't mean like slow-mo selfie because why? I don't mean some sort of weird AI thing that you can do with your eyeballs. No. Three camera lenses on the back of a phone is nothing new. This has been going on for a couple of years now with other phones. Apple, if they try to claim that they are innovating with this, then blah. But Apple can justify that ugly growth on the back of the phone with some truly unique possibilities. I don't know what they might be. Apple, surprise us. Do something new. Do something that somebody else hasn't already done before. You can do it! Unfortunately, in this day and age, new camera features are more gimmicks than anything else. I give to you slow-mo selfie as an example. Slow-mo selfie. Seriously. Apple has a sh also has a shot at greatly improving camera quality overall and thereby putting themselves back in the pole position <laughs> in the race for mobile phone camera dominance. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it may be too long ago for some of you to remember, but back in the old days, the iPhone was the best camera on any smartphone anywhere. Now, I mean, they do compete with video. Video is still very good on the iPhone, but they've been left behind with the cameras. And maybe this is a chance for them to come out, guns blazing, <laughs> camera. But we won't know until next week. If they do, in fact, do something like that, maybe, maybe some people will care about this iPhone. Maybe, because supposedly people care about the cameras. I don't think that's true, but a lot of people seem to think it's true, so... Oh, and you might be praying that the notch maybe would go away, but no, no, we know now that that's not going to happen either. Other manufacturers have lessened or eliminated the need for obscuring part of the screen for their camera arrays. Getting rid of the notch would definitely bring some people out to buy the phone. That alone would make people want to buy it. But alas, that's not going to happen. It's another incremental upgrade in a year where typically Apple would try to wow us with a new design or some new features or something like that. I think they're planning on the camera carrying the day and I just don't think that's going to work. Apparently the real good stuff is coming in 2020. Yeah, it, the 2019 phone is so boring that we're already talking about leaks and rumors for next year's phone. And we've been talking about them for months before the 2019 phone uh, was to be released. So that's how boring the 2019 iPhone is. This is a weird year for the first time in quite a while. I just don't feel the excitement. I don't feel the, I don't feel people getting jazzed out there. I don't know if this video is going to get any views. There's nothing at all to get excited about with the new iPhone. Two years ago, we had the iPhone 10, brand new whole thing. Woo! Last year, we got the iPhone XS Max and the iPhone XR. And uh, the XS Max was a bigger 10. And the XR was cheaper. So I guess it's not surprising that this year's iPhone, despite all the leaks and rumors, despite all the potential improvements to the phone, the, it had, the, it, nothing has gotten anybody's blood boiling. Nobody is getting, you know, hot in the pants area for this thing. There is the chance that Apple will pull something. But the days of one more thing seem to be gone. Instead, we have, good morning! But I digress. If Apple doesn't have something up their sleeve, I predict another year of flagging sales for the folks over there in the Cupertino Space Donut. No one cares about this year's iPhone, and I find it hard to blame them. What about you? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are tons of people out there just passionately waiting uh, for Apple to drop this phone or phones because they'll be pro or something. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I mean, this, I, I hate to be a negative Nelly. I hate to, you know, come out and just have bad things and negative things to say about devices that I typically love, but be honest. There's nothing, nothing, nothing.
Thanks again so much for being here. If it was your first time and you want to come back again, then you can like, subscribe, bell notify yourself so that you will always know when more painfully honest content has graced the internet with its presence. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back again. And if you have it within your means, perhaps think about uh, joining as a member of the Painfully Honest Tech channel where you can get super cool rewards and stuff. Uh, just launched that a week or two ago. And uh, yeah, we got some people. So it's exciting. Check it out down there. Click the join button. At any rate, once again, my name's Jason. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.